So yesterday I had probably one of the most terrifying experiences of my life. And I swear to God, I hope it never happens again. What is up guys? Welcome back. This is not the episode I was going to put up next, but this is the one you're getting. Um, I did film an episode at uh, Super Zoo, but after re-watching it and editing it and almost putting it up, I decided against it because I really didn't get the footage I wanted. Um, it just, it, that was such an intense show, um, and not having somebody to film for me makes it really difficult. Um, so, you know, it was a lot of this. I uh, can't really show products and talk about them and things like that. So, I mean, it's already edited. If you guys would like me to just throw it up, let me know. I'll do it. I have no problem with that. Um, so since I've been home from Super Zoo, life has been tremendously insane. And I don't even know where to begin. So why I'm filming this episode, I'm actually going to be doing some maintenance in here because uh, I desperately have fallen behind here in the snake building, um, reptile house, serpentarium, or whatever you want to call it, um, and I need to catch back up. So I figured I'll talk to you guys, film some stuff, why I'm doing it, um, and yeah, get you guys on the bandwagon back in the groove of things. Um, it's been... It's been crazy, and yesterday was absolutely terrifying. Alright, so, starting, um, starting when I got back from Vegas, uh, my microphone's here, so I don't want to wear my shirt, and, yeah, whatever. I don't have a hat on tonight. So, starting when I got back from Vegas, um, I felt a little sick, uh, like I probably caught something on the plane, or something in Vegas, whatever. Um, I just, my stomach was killing me, I had a slamming headache, um, I had a bit of a temperature, whatever, you know, life goes on, I gotta work through it, gotta make money, so on and so forth. So, um, I'm home for two, three days, I go back to work, um, and it's, you know, that, that Tuesday night uh summer is like hey can you come here there's 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 water in the garage and i'm like what what do you mean there's water in the garage so <clears throat> long story short i go in i go and examine it and i'm like wow there's one of the pipes is leaking in the wall so i go to you know then find the pipe to fix it big this boy is. Like, I can't even... That's wasabi. Like... Oh, goodness. Alright, interesting. I don't even know what that's gonna sound like, so sorry if it sounded like crazy, but... Um... Yeah, so... I find the problem and I'm like, oh crap. I'm like, oh crap, you know, a pipe broke in the wall, gotta fix it. So I take the wall apart and then I notice that it's coming out of the sleeve that wraps the copper pipe in the concrete from under the foundation. So I call Buddy, uh, uh, this plumber that lives literally right around the corner from me, um, and he's walking me through all this stuff, talking about it, da, 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 da. For hours this is going on, trying to figure out the problem. 
So he ends up coming over at like 10 o'clock at night. Mind you, this is Tuesday. This is a Tuesday. Comes over at 10 o'clock at night, and we come to the conclusion that there is a leak under the foundation of my house because not only is water coming out, but so is sand. So now, you know, and thankfully I have, my new job is, is challenging, uh, it's dangerous, and my boss is, excuse my French, but fucking amazing. Um, you guys, you know, may or may not know him if you follow Chandler or uh, Stone or, yeah, one of those two. Uh, he may or may not have been on their channels in the past. Whatever. Um, but his name's Patrick. He's fucking awesome. Um, and we're doing marine construction, basically build, building seawalls, doing dock piles, um, or, or concrete docks, stuff like that. Um, so he, you know, allows me to take off work for however long to fix this problem I have because not only did I have a leak, but it was also the main water line coming from my well pump to the house. So, as you can tell, I got a wicked farmer's tan now, which is weird, me with a farmer's tan. Um, but I'm in the sun literally all day. But anyway, so I have to then, starting Wednesday, start cutting open the floor of my, con of my garage to then get to this broken pipe. Uh, so that the plumber can fix it. So that takes me about a week to do, uh, about three days of cutting and jackhammering, um, and then come Friday at three o'clock in the morning after I had tunneled to the broken pipe because it wasn't like right there, of course. Um, the plumber at 3:30, it was like 3 3:30 in the morning, Friday night or Saturday morning, the plumber finally got it fixed uh, after being there for about five hours um, <clears throat> so mind you again I was sick um, I had to do all that felt like crap the whole time I you know was very frustrated the whole time um, but yeah so that all happens you know the, the pipe gets fixed I'm grateful it got fixed it cost a pretty plenty to fix it obviously and a lot of my time and energy um, and then Come next, or coming now, that was Friday night. Come Sunday, the following Sunday after that, Summer starts saying she doesn't feel good. Summer doesn't really complain too much and she doesn't feel good. Whatever, you know, we got kids, we got animals. Shit still needs to get done whether we feel good or not. So yeah, so come Monday morning, Summer is so sick that she is literally crying. Alright, I need to make sure I face the microphone so you can hear me over the rattlesnake. Maybe this wasn't such a good idea. Look at that beautiful girl. Mm, mm, mm. Alright, in you go. So, she comes downstairs Monday morning crying that she feels so bad, this, that, and the other thing. So I call my boss and I'm like, hey dude, I know I just had a week off of work, but summer's super sick, I need to stay home and take care of the kids. He says no problem. Look at that boy. Look at that boy. Love this rattlesnake so much. Alright, there you go. Back to your girl. He's got like 15 beads on his rattle too, which is absolutely crazy. Alright, let me get the last one in before I keep talking so you guys can actually hear me. Oh, sorry, I'm on a lot of uh, monster and nicotine right now. And almost no sleep. Okay. Now that that's done, um, so yeah, so I stay home Monday, 
that light is really bright. So I have a spotlight because it's kind of dark in this room for filming because uh, I took the ceiling lights down. But anyway, so come Monday night, Summer feels even worse. Uh, she's basically living in the bathroom and living in bed. Um, then come Tuesday morning, same thing, even worse Tuesday morning. So I'm like, hey, why don't you go to the doctor, go to a clinic, whatever. I would have to drive her. She was so dizzy she couldn't even drive. Um, then come Tuesday around 3 or 4 o'clock, her mother comes over, uh, my mother-in-law, and Summer is so out of it, she's like, I'm taking to the hospital. So they go to the hospital. Some are so dehydrated from, you know, just everything going on um, that literally uh, she's at the hospital and she goes to go to the bathroom or something and she faints, passes out in the bathroom at the hospital. Um, she was so, de like, so severely dehydrated that they had to put her on several IVs. Um, I think she was doing like two at once. Um, and it was just bad. So, again, long story short, I ended up taking off work the entire second week I was home from Vegas as well uh, to take care of the kids, essentially, uh, because Summer was just so out of it. But Monday as well, I should probably back up so you guys can see my whole head. Uh, so Monday as well, uh, Coral and Wilder started getting sick. Not the same sickness that Summer had, but they were also sick. So I was taking care of her, Summer, being extremely sick, the kids being moderately sick, and then also all of the animals and not working um, my normal job. So it was a very rough week that week as well. Summer didn't get better until almost the following Sunday. She pretty much lived in bed uh, the entire week. Uh, you know, I had to make sure the kids were getting their medicine. Uh, Coral had a wicked cough, um, her stomach was bothering her really bad, same thing with Wilder, Wilder's stomach was off the chain um, when it comes to how much I had to change his diaper. Um, yeah, it was very, very, very stressful. Um, so finally, this past week, you know, things looked like they were getting back to normal. Um, I actually ended up going to work all week. Uh, we had some major issues at work this past week, which come Friday, I was able to get them all fixed, which was phenomenal. Um, my boss recognized that, you know, I got a bonus for the week, which was pff, obviously a really great thing. Um, but then I'm driving home beat and broken because it was a very labor intensive week on Friday. Um, and my mother-in-law calls me. Uh, mind you, Thursday we had to drop my boss's truck off at the dealership because his truck was having issues and he usually just picks me up and we ride together. Um, and then Friday, after I dropped him off at his house, my mother-in-law calls me and says her truck isn't starting. So then I had to go and try and fix her truck. Turns out it's a computer issue and had to get towed. So... That's happening. Um, also, Wilder started running a temperature Thursday night, a little bit of a, a temperature. Uh, you know, nothing crazy. It was like 100, whatever. Uh, but we were, we were monitoring it, you know, keeping an eye on it. Summer's feeling better. Coral's feeling better. Wilder, not so much. So Saturday comes along, and it... Uh, you know, it seems like a normal Saturday. My weekends are now time to work on the zoo, basically. Um, you know, that's basically the only time I really have because by the time I get home from work during the week, I'm tired, I'm exhausted, I want to spend time with the family, so on and so forth. So Saturday comes along, I'm doing some stuff around the house, outside, over here working with the animals, stuff like that. Um, day goes on normal you know again besides wilder having a temperature um gets a little warm a couple times we give him what little medicine he'll take because he is not good at taking medicine at all for that matter um but yeah and then you know saturday night comes along and summer tells me she's gonna get wilder to bed i say good night to him and 
I go out to decide to try and vacuum out the car a little bit, you know, having kids, lots of food, lots of crumbs, brings ants, so on and so forth. So I literally start cleaning out the car, getting toys out, shoes out, diaper bags, so on and so forth. And then the next thing I know, Coral kicks open the garage door and is screaming, saying, Daddy, something's wrong with Wilder. Mommy needs you now. She's crying. So I immediately stop what I'm doing and run inside. Now, by the time I get inside, Summer's already back downstairs. Mom's on the phone with somebody and Summer is bawling her eyes out saying that something's wrong with Wilder. Um, he pretty much went unresponsive for a little bit. Um, she thinks he had a seizure. So mom's on the phone with 911. I'm like, okay, why are we here? We need to get to the hospital right now. Again, I don't know anything about seizures. I've seen animals have them. I think I might have seen a person have one, but an adult, not a kid. Never once have I seen a little kid, especially my son, have a seizure. So, um, again, mom's on the phone with 911. They're telling her, you know, what to do, and they've already dispatched an ambulance. Mind you, the hospital is literally a minute away from us. The ambulance is about two to three minutes away from us because it's just on the other side of the major street there. We are very close. Um, so I'm yelling at Summer. I grab my keys, make sure I have my wallet. And mind you, this is all happening so fast. Um, Wilder is pretty much unresponsive. Uh, Coral's crying, Summer's praying very loudly. I'm just trying to stay focused and make sure my son's gonna be okay. Um, we run out front. Mom keeps saying the ambulance is on its way, the ambulance is on its way, and I keep saying, doesn't matter, we're literally a minute from the hospital, literally one minute from the hospital. It's literally two turns and we're at the hospital. Um, I was like, get in the car. And she's like, I don't want to put him in the car seat. And I said, you're not. You're going to sit in the front seat and we're going to drive there. It's going to be fine. <sighs> then um, mom's like, they said they, sh they should be here any minute now, any minute. So Summer realizes she doesn't have pants on. Again, all happening very fast. Um, she realizes she doesn't have freaking pants on. So she goes and hands me Wilder. Now at the time, again, didn't know what was happening, but he was having a seizure. Um, again, this is my baby boy. And uh, she hands me Wilder and his eyes were open, but the next thing I know, she goes to hand him to me and he's out. Like she pretty much handed me a corpse, it, it felt like. Um, so I'm freaking out at this point. I'm obviously crying. And I start beating on his back, and I'm like, Wilder, wake up, buddy, wake up, wake up. Just, you know, hitting him, hitting him pretty hard, yelling, like, Wilder, wake up, wake up, buddy, like, freaking out. And um, all of a sudden, this goes on for, I don't know, 15, 20 seconds, and then he opens his eyes and <gasps> takes a big gasp of air, and then kind of starts moaning and crying at the same time, uh, very out of it, uh, almost like he was extremely drunk. Um, and then, uh, you know, so I'm like, where the hell is the ambulance? Because they didn't want to just ride him over there in the front seat of the car, obviously, for safety reasons. Uh, but you're also not supposed to put kids in car seats if they're having uh, a, a seizure. Um, yeah, so then I run out to the street to see where the ambulance is because our street is very, very long. It's about two miles long, and I can see them at, you know, at the end of the street with their lights flashing. And I'm like, Wilder, look, buddy, look, here comes an ambulance, you know, little boy ambulance fire trucks he's all about them um and you can see the lights coming down the street again it's already sundown um it's already dark out and uh yeah so he kind of once he hears that he kind of opens his eyes a little bit and he's like squinting trying to look um i said that to try and get him to focus on something so i knew he was responsive and then he kind of tried to mumble and say something but he really wasn't getting it out um, but yeah, so we watched them come down the street. They get there. The guys all jump out and you know huge thank you to them because they You know obviously did do a lot um, They're like hey, this is okay. This is a very common thing. He's gonna be okay You know this that and the other thing they get summer on the gurney and then him on the gurney on top of her And basically say they're gonna sit in the truck for a minute hook him up to all the fancy equipment and then um, 
you know, we'll go get going to get going to the hospital. So they say I can, you know, follow behind them. Shouldn't be a problem. I'll get right in. This, that, and the other thing. Um, so yeah. So they sit in the driveway for two, three minutes. Again, I'm assuming they were hooking up all the stuff to him, the monitors and whatnot. Uh, you know, my son is very full of life, obviously. Um, and he was just, he was out of it. He just wasn't himself. Very, again, he looked pretty much drunk. Um, so yeah, they start going. I'm, I'm sitting in the truck waiting and then I'm like, oh shit, I don't even have shoes in here. My shoes are by the front door. So before they left, I was able to jump out, grab my shoes really quick. You know, Coral was staying home with my mother-in-law. And then um, we start going. I follow the ambulance, obviously, right, right behind them. And then uh, we get to the hospital. The, they hop out and they're like, hey, go park over there. And then just go in to the, to the ER. So I do all that. I get in there and I'm like, hey, I'm like, I'm here to see my son. He literally just came in on an ambulance. Um, they're like, what's his name? I was like, Wilder Nace, you know, Wilder Nace. Um, and uh, they're like, oh, we're not seeing it. And, you know, they typed it really quick or whatever. But I was like, no, he literally just came in on an ambulance, like, right now. And they're like, all right, just come on back then. And they bring me in the back. They find him, obviously, in a second. And as soon as he sees me, he starts crying, daddy, daddy, daddy. Um, he's been all about daddy lately. Um, and again, he's still sitting on top of summer. But all the nurses are in there trying to get him checked out, make sure everything's okay, um, and pretty much go from there. Again, this was literally the most terrifying thing of my entire fucking life. Because my son, I thought he was, he was like dead when Summer handed him to me. Um, but yeah, so, you know, we're in the hospital, my awesome boss, uh, I, I did make a post after, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes of being there, saying, you know, everybody please pray for him, uh, just keep him in your thoughts, pray for him please, you know, we think he had a seizure, or whatever. My boss starts calling me, obviously I'm not answering, and then he shoots me a text, he says, hey, my, uh, I think he said his best friend runs that ER. He's not there, he's on a cruise, but he's putting you on uh, the VIP list. So they're gonna take extremely good care of you. Did they ever? Oh my God, did they take care of us? Um, nobody ever left us. Oh great, <laughs> it might start raining. Um, we were in and out of that hospital in two hours. Um, you know, they told us everything what to do. They said that now that he has had a seizure with the temperature, a high fever, um, it is possible that he could have another one anytime he has a seizure. To not freak out, um, it's like 30% of kids get them and they grow out of it by the time they're six. Which is obviously still terrifying. I don't care what anybody says. Um, yeah. Um, I don't know, it, it's just, it was hard. It was very, very hard seeing that, seeing my son lifeless, um, you know, not knowing what to do, not being able to help him. Um, I don't wish that on anybody or anybody that has kids or anything like that, because again, absolutely fucking terrifying. Excuse my French. But um, yeah, so my sister showed up. I don't know, you know, she got there and it's an hour drive for her, but she somehow managed to get there in 40 minutes. Um, they, she didn't even finish saying his name. She said Wilder, and they brought her right to the back immediately. And again, I think that had to do with the VIP thing. She didn't even have to like sign in, which to me is crazy. Um, but yeah, so huge thank you to all the staff um, at the hospital because that was truly amazing. Um, and they told us basically what to do from now on if, you know, if it happens. And, uh, yeah, they sent us on our merry way, and we came home. Now, we came home Saturday night. You know, by the time we got home, it was like 11-something at night, and I thought... That was going to be the end of our worries. Um, boy, 
was I wrong? I was very, very wrong. Now I do want to remind you guys, I will be at Animal Con this year. Uh, so if you guys are going or thinking about going, you should. Uh, it is October 4th, 5th, and 6th at the Cree Royale in Orlando. So make sure you guys book those flights, get to Orlando, the 4th, the 5th, and the 6th of October. Super exciting, it's gonna be so much fun. You're gonna to get to meet all your favorite animal content creators. Um, you can do meet and greets, you can do a meet and greet with me, get some one-on-one -on -one time. Um, I'm gonna probably bring some stickers to give out. Uh, it's gonna be, honestly, it's gonna be so much fun. Uh, this is the first year without bar check. Um, so it's going to be difficult in that aspect, um, but again, this is the one time of year I get to actually see all my content creator friends. Um, as you know, it is difficult for me to travel with the family unless it is work related. So I am super stoked for it. Um, but anyway, with that being said, back to the video. So a little backtrack really quick. So earlier Saturday around 3 o'clock, uh, Wilder went to the doctor and they told us or told Summer that um, he has like bronchitis or some, or some something like that because he has a wicked cough along with the temperature um, and that's you know what's going on basically and they gave us medicine that I had to pay a lot of money for um, an inhaler and, and some antibiotics and stuff um, this is now the second time that they've this particular doctor and it's a group of doctors it's not one doctor because there are some really good doctors at this place um, that they have misdiagnosed my children um, and led them to pretty much go to the hospital uh, Coral had something in the beginning of the year we went to this doctor's office uh, three times in one week by the third time we had a different doctor the first time we had one doctor second time we had a different doctor third time we had a different doctor and she was mad that the other two had misdiagnosed coral turned out she had walking pneumonia uh, which is horrible if you don't know um, but anyway so yeah they told us that wilder has bronchitis and that's why he's sick so we went home bought a bunch of antibiotics and medicine and everything but then when we went to the hospital they told us that's wrong he's got a viral infection they did an x-ray of his lungs and his lungs were clear um yeah but anyway, so we come home Saturday night, my sister, oops, dropped the rat. My sister, uh, you know, obviously came as well. Hey, whoa, don't be a little jumpy. Hey, look over here, I got food for you. Look, where'd you go? Um, oh, there you are, okay. There you go. Um, my sister came home with us too, obviously. She drove, you know, over an hour it would have been an hour to get here um, and you know she hung out for a good hour or two after we got home and she left and then we went to get Wilder up to bed mind you it's about one o'clock in the morning at this point um, and <sighs> so he likes to walk up our stairs we have a two-story house he likes to walk up the stairs so you know we start walking up the stairs he gets to the top he turns the corner from the staircase and all of a sudden he just drops like he's still aware and everything whatever but he just like drops down to like his butt and then kind of pops back up and starts walking again and then we went over to pick him up because he was still you know super groggy apparently after you have a seizure you're very tired so um you know we thought it was kind of weird we uh you know strike yeah you are we um get him finally into bed or whatever and it's, it's a rough night he's crying and whining and everything all night um he was just he's very uncomfortable you know for obvious obvious reasons um and we you know the next day we get up super tired um and the day goes on you know just trying to get him to relax, stay calm, not get too worked up, because he still has a very high temperature. His temperature was around 100 degrees. Um, and I go to get him a drink um, out of the fridge. He's walking up behind me, and the next thing I know, I hear him just straight up collapse. Now, if you have kids, 
you know what the sound of your kid collapsing and hitting the floor is in you, in your house. You know, uh, you hear it all the time. They so run around, they're playing, they fall. You get very used to that sound. Um, in this case, you know, my eyes weren't on him. Summer was upstairs. Uh, I think putting away laundry or doing doing something, you know, and Coral was downstairs too, and he he fell, and you know I knew the sound that I turned, you know, it was just a quarter turn of my head to be able to see him, um, and his face hit the floor hard. Uh, it was a very loud thud. We have very hard floors in our house. We have the Mexican tile, um, which is basically terracotta. Um, and he immediately started wailing. But I was like, that's the second time he's fallen. Why did he fall like that? You know, I started freaking out because he fell so hard that he literally has... Immediately, his, his, his eyebrows started swelling. Um, and he essentially gave himself a black eye. Um, you know. And we were freaking out, thinking maybe, you know, the worst, obviously. Um... Maybe he had brain damage from the seizure or something. Something happened, right? Um, but lo and behold, thank God, Ryder, uh, which is uh, Tyler Nolan's awesome little daughter, uh, for those of you guys that don't know, her and, for whatever reason, her and Coral are like BFFs. Ryder loves Coral. Coral loves Ryder. Um, you know, that was the whole reason Tyler moved up here so that we could raise our kids together. Um, Unfortunately, we're both very busy, so it doesn't get to happen too much. Uh, but what, Summer was talking to Gianna about it because I did make a post um, on Facebook and on Instagram. Um, and again, huge thank you to all you guys that commented, said you guys were praying. Like, it means a lot. So I did see your comments. I did see everything. Um, I really do appreciate it from the bottom of my heart so does summer so thank you guys for that but anyway um so gianna has epilepsy uh which causes seizures so something i was a little upset that the doctors didn't tell us um was that after you have a seizure you're very groggy um, you're very tired. They did tell us that, but they didn't tell us that you are susceptible to get dizzy spells and literally have your legs give out underneath you. Um, if that were the case, you know, maybe we would have been watching Wilder a little bit more intensely, not let him been really walking around. Uh, but she told Summer that for the first 24 to 48 hours after a seizure, um, that does happen. You can get dizzy spells. Your legs can basically give out from underneath you. Um, and you collapse, and we think that's what happened to Wilder the night before, and also um, on Sunday, um, and that's why he hit his face on the ground. Um, so we were monitoring him very carefully. Again, you know, then comes Sunday night. Um, at this point, his eye was was huge, massive, little swollen thing. You know, we uh, again had a rough night on. Sunday night, uh, he just, he was so uncomfortable, uh, didn't really sleep well. I was, I think maybe Sunday night I got maybe 30 minutes of sleep. Uh, he was just tossing and turning. He felt like he couldn't get comfortable. And then when he finally did get comfortable, he'd start coughing up a lung. Um, and I'm not exaggerating that either. So it was very difficult. Um, I went to work, you know, Monday morning and my boss saw how exhausted I was mentally and physically. Um, we left a little early that day and then he told me to take today off. Um, so I did, I did take today off. I'm going back tomorrow. Um, I'm excited to get back to work. Uh, and then also last night, Wilder's fever finally broke by some miracle. Um, you know, so he, to, starting today, he was kind of back to his happy, normal self, which was obviously fantastic. It's something every parent wants is their kid to be happy and healthy, and he fully is again. Um, so, with the exception of a, a black eye. So, there is that. Um, yeah. So, very, very stressful past, 
you know, the last week, uh, starting with work, then moving home to the family. Uh, but hopefully here, you know, now everything can start getting back to normal. Hopefully the virus doesn't jump to either myself or Coral. Uh, we've been taking the precautionaries to make sure that hopefully doesn't happen. But again, time will tell. So now due to everything that's been going on, I have not had the time to come in here and spend with the animals like I had liked. Um, I had, was actually planning on coming in here and doing a deep clean on Saturday night. Obviously, <laughs> that didn't happen um, for obvious reasons. Um, but yeah, so I'm just doing some quick spot cleans. Um, you know, really excited because I finally got some new tanks in that I've been waiting for for months. Um, so a huge shout out and thank you to Wild Cargo Pets for that, making that finally happen. Um, so here, uh, I'd say here in the next month or two, I'll have some videos up on the Barefoot Builder channel, finally. Um, it's only been, I don't know, over a year, maybe two years since I've posted a video on the Barefoot Builder channel. Um, so we'll have some new content on there here soon. So some other news really quick. Um, the Hag and I eggs that were in there, um, I don't know what happened. Uh, I don't know if maybe I wasn't paying enough attention or what, uh, but they all didn't make it. They all kind of got withered up and failed. So hopefully next year, third time is the charm with those guys. Um, I'm actually thinking about moving them into the big paludarium. Um, I'm also going to be rearranging the vivarium or the uh, this vision room here soon too because uh, I did get rid of some cages uh, boom so whole stack of 634's is gone or 632's is gone um, that is for a giant paludarium it's not mine but I wish it was because it is the perfect size for what I need right here that's gonna be here till the first weekend of Daytona the first weekend of November, excuse me, Wilder's birthday. We're going to Daytona for Aquashella. Um, but yeah, let me know if you guys want me to put it there. Comment down below. Let me know if you want me to put it there so you guys can see what it'll look like with a giant paludarium here. At least the tank and stand. And then I want you guys to go on Vision's page on their either Facebook or Instagram. Oh, excuse me, not Vision. Custom Aquariums. I want you guys to all go on their Facebook, their Instagram, their TikTok is Adam Specialty Products, whatever platform you're on, and I want you guys to be like, Will Nace needs a giant amphibious tank, which is that, that's the amphibious tank, also known as a paludarium, but they call it an amphibious tank. You guys all need to go on there and be like, Will Nace needs a giant amphibious tank right meow right meow and yes i said meow because i want that like a year ago that is my dream project this is a i believe six foot tank the tank is outside right now but because i think uh my good friend steven brazil is actually getting it um but yeah animal con is coming up super stoked for that um and to end this on a good happy cheerful note um, oh, also too, like, if you guys are going to go to Animal Con, like, first off, get your tickets now, but you're going to get to, like, personally hang out with these creators. So make sure you guys get your tickets. I will put uh, the website in the description below. Go check that out after you go on Custom Aquariums' social media platforms. Do them all if you can and comment that, you know, Will Nace needs a giant amphibious tank. But to end this on a, on a happier note, um, in these three tubs right here, doo -doo -doo, one, two, three, um, we have out of the five, um, three did actually hatch, we have our little tadpoles. Tadpoles, tadpoles, tadpoles. I said that very weird, my voice cracked the first time I said it, but you can see him in the back there. There's one. Oh, it's not focusing. Maybe this one. You can see him in the back corner there. This one is, I believe, underneath the leaf right here. Yeah, he is. He's 
He's right there. Oh, he's got little legs too. Hopefully you guys can see that. I can't really tell what, the, what I'm doing here, but he's he's about an inch in front of my thumb there. His little legs, you can kind of see him sticking out on the sides. Really cool. Really, really cool. So I actually need to do a water change on these guys here tomorrow. Boom. Super stoked about those. So those are the Kahlua and Cream Dart Frogs. Same ones that are in there. Then I got my little isopods and springtails. Isopods courtesy of Josh's Frogs. Hopefully going to be doing some cool stuff with them here in the next couple months as well. They actually are selling these cool little deli cups. And I'm pretty sure they're already out nationwide with a shelf life. And they have five isopods in them they have a shelf life of i think they said like two months uh which is really cool to sell to like petco pet smart you know all those other pet stores also whatever little pet stores want to sell them and they can just keep them on the shelf they can hang them in a little deli cup super dope i thought it was a really great idea they gave me a bunch to sample um so i set these three up and put the other two in some of the tanks yeah there's one of the leaf tail geckos i think that's actually the female all right, so this video is already probably super long. Um, I will be at Tinley too, so make sure you guys come and say what's up there, uh, which is the weekend after Animal Con. I'm home for two days, fly out again for another five days. Uh, but yeah, so that's gonna be it, guys. I will see you guys in the next video, like always. Remember, go to social media on to Custom Aquariums and tell them that Will Nace needs a giant amphibious tank. Don't forget. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Like always, remember to subscribe, comment, share, all that fun stuff. Bye!